Hey, what's up guys? So this past weekend, we got together with a bunch of different laser guns uh, to do some laser jammer testing. Now, unfortunately, on the day of the test, it wound up raining pretty heavily. Nevertheless, we got a lot of testing done and I actually learned a lot. Uh, police laser guns, I mean, they're designed to be used in the rain. Police officers will shoot in the rain, and so our laser jammers need to be able to function in the rain too. And so uh, there's been a lot of testing done, you know, in dry weather, but in this video, I wanna go over kind of what we saw uh, as far as rain testing, both from the perspective of uh, how police laser guns operate in the rain, it definitely is different uh, compared to how they function in dry weather, as well as what we saw uh, from the laser jammer end as well. And so with that said, let's go into everything that we learned and saw uh, in this weekend's test. Now, before we get started, a quick disclaimer, testing in the rain is definitely gonna be a pretty big variable, plus the rain itself kind of varied throughout the day. We had a mix of anywhere from drizzling weather, kind of light rain, uh, to a pretty heavy downpour. And so uh, that's definitely gonna be uh, affecting the results here as well. Additionally, we also found a pretty big difference between uh, laser guns targeting the front of vehicles uh, as well as the rear, which I'll get into here in just a second. And so I wouldn't trust these results to be like kind of definitive and conclusive. They're just one more data point uh, and some interesting data that we learned along the way. Additionally, we also noticed that the results would vary uh, depending on how the install was done, which is pretty typical, uh, what laser jamming system you're using, how much rain we saw, et cetera. And so with that said, let's go ahead and start diving into some of the results. So starting off, let's begin with Jim H711's Porsche Cayman GTS. He's running a set of ALPs and he's got two regular heads on the front uh, and one TX black head in the center. Now, when we were testing his car, it was definitely raining pretty heavily. Regardless, his setup seemed to do pretty well against some of the easier laser guns, including your uh, custom PL4, uh, your LRB, even your True Speed S and Stalker RLR. Then as far as the Dragonite guns, we definitely started seeing more issues here. Uh, we saw a number of different punch throughs here with all of the different Dragonite guns uh, that we didn't see with some of the easier guns. Now, we even saw some instant punch throughs, which is not something I was expecting here, especially with an ALP install. Uh, it was raining pretty heavily at the time that we were shooting his car, uh, so I don't know if this was related to the rain, uh, I don't know if it's something with the firmware version that he was running or if it's something specific to his install, but either way, this was definitely concerning to see. Uh, and so we're gonna have to do a little bit more kind of digging and research to figure out what's going on here. Uh, for full information and discussion about all the test results that I'm gonna share, we've got a whole thread going on the forum. I'll link to that down in the video description so you can check out. But in this video, we're just gonna be kind of running through some of the results. Now that said, we tested a bunch more ALP installs and those ones in general did much better than we saw. Uh, here on the Cayman. So for example, we had uh, Maz 3's Mazda CX-5, and he's got uh, three ALP heads on the front, two regular plus one TX non-black head in the center, as well as the same triple setup in the rear uh, with his heads actually mounted behind acrylic covers. And unlike with the Cayman, this setup was totally bulletproof. We didn't get a single punch through at all uh, on the front or the rear. Now, he's one of the many Canadians who came down for the testing, and they've got a ton of Dragon Eyes that they do some testing with, and so they actually wanted to test against uh, some of the American guns and the American Dragon Eyes that we had brought to the test. And so he's done some testing before to kind of optimize his setup, uh, and it looks like his setup was actually doing great here uh, against the American guns that we tested with as well. Similarly, JDAM came down from Canada with an ALP setup on his Volkswagen Golf. On his car, he's running four heads up front, uh, two regular heads and two TX black heads. Uh, they're actually installed behind these uh, removable acrylic covers. On the back, he's got just two heads, uh, one regular head and one TX head, again, covered with acrylic. He's done a bunch of testing up in Canada too, with great results, uh, and testing with our American guns. Again, he's done an excellent job. It was totally solid and bulletproof here uh, with his ALP install. And seeing these test results definitely started to give me more confidence in the capabilities of the ALP uh, to handle even some of these tougher guns and even when driving and testing in the rain. Next, let's take a look at S. Mason's Mazda 3. Uh, now, he'd had an issue in the past with one of the ALP heads actually failing after an accident, and so uh, he wound up doing some testing both with and without one of the regular heads. Uh, initially, he was testing with just one regular head and one TX head, and then he stopped and temporarily installed uh, an additional regular head on the passenger side of the car to do some testing with two regular heads and one center TX head. So starting off with the testing with just two heads, one regular and one TX black head, uh, it was doing pretty well with some of the easier guns, but did actually have some punch throughs uh, with one of the Dragon Eye compacts. Uh, and then switching over and adding that second regular head up front, uh, he did some additional testing and it seems like the results were much better with that added head up front, which is to be expected. And speaking of head failures, this was actually a pretty big thing and something especially problematic uh, for the TMG installs. Uh, Run for Donut on the forums, uh, he drove two hours to the test site uh, with the TMG install and it turns out when we started testing, he was getting no alert at all from his TMG setup 
we wound up doing some troubleshooting and reinstalling the firmware and unplugging heads, and it turns out uh, one of the heads in his install had died and completely took down his entire system. So the heads weren't functioning and they weren't even giving him an alert, and he had no idea while he was driving that he had zero laser protection at all. Now with the ALP, if you have a head failure, it'll actually let you know that a head is down, a cable is unplugged, whatever's going on, it'll let you know that there's a malfunction with the head, it'll tell you which head, and the rest of the heads will still operate. With the TMG, it looks like you can run into a situation where you have a head failure, you have no warning in the cabin, and it winds up taking down your entire system so none of the other heads operate either. Luckily though, after some troubleshooting on site to kind of figure out what was going on, we unplugged the defective head, uh, fired it back up with just two heads, and resumed doing testing here. And this TMG dual setup actually seemed to do pretty well, especially if there wasn't a ton of rain. Uh, we saw some pretty good jamming capabilities against uh, some of the easier guns, and surprisingly good performance uh, even against some of the Dragonite guns and without a third head and without a VPR head. That said, we definitely saw an issue that would kind of change relative to the rain. Uh, with one of the tests that we did, he pretty much went instant punch through, uh, and then it would jam for about five seconds, and then it would just go instant punch through again. Uh, then after we were like, okay, this is weird, we did some more troubleshooting, all that kind of stuff, uh, the rain had died down, right? So we had a lot less rain, and in that situation, we had, what was it, a 171 foot punch through. So it jammed almost the entire length of the course, and so it seems like the TMG was definitely affected as well uh, by heavy rain. And speaking of rain affecting things with respect to LiDAR, we also saw some impacts to the laser guns themselves. Uh, even targeting cars that didn't have any laser jammers, it seemed to affect their ability to quickly lock in speeds, uh, especially from the rear. Looking at the front first though, they could still get a lock uh, even in heavy rain, but it would take longer to actually get that lock. It would kind of slow down their acquisition capabilities. The rear of cars was very heavily affected to the point where uh, with most laser guns, it may actually take several seconds to get a speed and with some guns, was completely unable to get a lock on the back of the cars at all, uh, even cars that didn't have any laser jammers at all. And we were thinking about this, and we actually think it has to do with uh, when you're driving in the rain and your tires are kicking up rain and water behind the vehicle that can kind of act like chaff a bit uh, and uh, impact the laser gun's ability to actually get a reading uh, off of the back of the vehicles. That said, the uh, True Speed S seemed to do the very best job of acquiring locks on the, uh, the rear of cars. This one actually did a great job in the rain. Pretty much all the other laser guns had an issue uh, acquiring locks locks onto the back of the vehicles. Uh, this is not anything that's going to be surprising to police officers. If you've got a laser gun, you can go out and test this in the rain and you'll find out really quick. But to those of us who uh, are not officers, we're not actually the ones actually going out in the rain and issuing citations, right? I think this is really helpful information. And then coming back to uh, some more laser jammer testing, let's next take a look uh, at Farius's Audi Q5. For his ALP install up front, he's running two regular heads and one TX non-black head in the center. Uh, and then in the rear, he's got just two regular heads with no TX head. Surprisingly though, when you go take a look at the results, you'll see there were actually more issues uh, with accomplishing the jamming in the rain uh, with the front of the vehicle than there were in the rain. Uh, up front, uh, it did pretty well against some of the easier guns, but then you get into some of the Dragonite guns and it did have a little bit of a tougher time. Though when you take a look at the rear uh, test results, it went jam from gun <laughs> against all of the different guns. And again, that was without uh, an additional TX head to improve the Dragonite jamming capabilities. And we suspect that this is actually due to the uh, uh, kind of that rain issue I mentioned. As you're driving, it's uh, kind of kicking up rain in the back of the vehicle. And we were surprised by this initially, seeing the rear performing better, even without a TX head, until we started actually doing some more testing. And we're like, oh man, there's a lot of cars, even without jammers, that uh, we're struggling to get locks on with our laser guns. And so that's actually what we suspect uh, is the cause for his uh, results actually being better for the rear testing than the front. So something we learned. Next up, I wanted to go ahead and test my wife's Honda Fit uh, running a set of Escort ZW5s, uh, Escort's wireless laser jammers. And taking a look at the results here against things like your True Speed S or your Stalker RLR, the ZW5s did great here in the rain. Uh, again, they did have some issues with jamming uh, some of the Dragonite guns, especially kind of out towards the headlights, did better with center mass shots. Uh, but regardless, it still did all right. And for something just kind of easy to install and throw in the car, especially for like a rental car install or something, I think this is totally fine. I mean, we don't have Dragon Eyes here where I live, and so against your custom PL4s and your True Speed S, it seems like the setup here is pretty solid. It's not going to perform as well as something like an ALP or some of the other jammers that allow you to install more than just two heads up front, but they at least do the job for what we need. Next up, let's take a look at Fox Dang's Ford Mustang. Uh, he's got ALPs installed as well, and he's got a set of triples up front, uh, three regular heads, uh, and then in the rear, he's got two regular heads. And overall, his setup here was pretty solid. Did great against the Stalker RLR, did have some punch throughs against uh, the Dragon Eye Speed LiDAR, but then went jam to gun and jam from gun uh, against the newer Dragon Eye Compact. 
And then finally, let's take a look at Me Is My Name's uh, ALP dual setup that he had installed on his BMW. Now with his two heads, he did well against the uh, True Speed S and Stalker RLR, but we did definitely see more issues here with jamming some of the Dragonite guns. Uh, in Washington, again, we don't have the Dragonite guns, but nevertheless, uh, the dual setup seemed to work well against some of the easier guns, but then started to struggle against some of the tougher guns. That's also to be expected without the VPR head, or the TX head, I guess, for the ALP. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's what we saw here with a set of duels. Now, would all these results be different uh, in dry weather than in the rain? I think so, yeah. But again, we do experience uh, rain here uh, in Washington, so I think it's helpful to kind of just test it out and see what you find. Is it better? Is it worse? I don't know. You know, that's kind of what we saw. And so I guess some of the main takeaways that we saw from testing is Rain definitely makes it harder for laser guns uh, to acquire a speed. Uh, so, for example, uh, shooting cars on the front, officers are still going to be able to do it. It's easier for them to target the front of the car than it is for the rear. Um, in heavy rain, they can do it, but it may start to actually slow down a little bit uh, their acquisition capabilities. Shooting the rear of cars for laser guns is really, really tough. It may take a couple seconds. They may not be able to do it at all. And so I would assume that officers are going to be spending much more time, if they're actually out shooting in the rain, uh, shooting the front of vehicles compared to the rear. We also found this may be true for laser jammers as well, to where uh, they may struggle more in the rain, especially in heavy rain, than they do in dry weather or in light rain. And so that's definitely something to be aware of, is that heavy rain does seem to compromise uh, both the capabilities of the laser guns and the laser jammers in some situations. Now, uh, these laser guns, they almost all have, well, yeah, all the ones that we tested have a poor weather mode. Uh, we tested with this on and off, and it didn't seem to impact the ability for the guns to acquire speeds and lock in targets uh, in heavier rain with the feature turned on. All the feature does is it just kind of uh, increases the minimum distance uh, to where they can get a speed. The idea is that close range, you know, rain or snowflakes or whatever else, is going to have a bigger impact to the laser gun, so it's just ignoring... Uh, any rain droplets that are closer up. And so the minimum distance that they can acquire speed, depending on the gun, is going to be anywhere from 200 uh, to 250 feet or so. And they're not going to be able to acquire speeds of any cars that are closer than that. And that really seems to be all that the, uh, uh, the poor weather mode is doing here uh, with these different laser guns. Additionally, in terms of placement for kind of the best places to install the laser jammer heads on your car, we found that this can vary. There's definitely some uh, general recommendations and guidelines for uh, where you should install the heads, but we found that uh, sometimes that's not always going to apply perfectly to every single vehicle, and you may actually want to kind of experiment. That's what testing is all about, with like different uh, installation locations to figure out what's optimal for your specific vehicle. And so testing, we found, can be very, very helpful uh, to figure out kind of the best place to install the stuff before you get everything permanently installed and locked into your car. Additionally, we also found that uh, some radar detectors may do a better job of picking up some laser guns than others. Like, for example, uh, the unit in R7 on the windshield seemed to do a better job of uh, picking up the Stalker RLR uh, than it did the Dragon Eye Speed LiDAR. So that was interesting. Uh, we also found that uh, the TMGs, the laser jammers, they seem to do a better job when you're driving over 45 miles an hour or so. We'd heard that before and we were able to confirm that here in testing. Uh, and we also found that the TMGs, they've got a pretty uh, fatal flaw that we've again heard about before and we just saw it firsthand here in this test to where if a head dies, you don't get any notification in the cabin and it can take down your entire system without any warning at all and none of the other heads will operate if one of the heads go down. Now TMG does ship their laser jammers with a little handheld tester like this. You basically just press the button here uh, and it'll trigger your laser jammers to make sure that they're functioning, that the heads are working and you're getting an alert uh, inside the cabin. So if you order TMGs, definitely make sure that you test them out uh, pretty regularly to ensure uh, that your system is functioning. Uh, on the forums, Jag42 actually mentioned that sometimes the CPU's Bluetooth light will blink blue to let you know if you have a bad head, but there's no other audible or visual notification to let you know that your system has gone down. It otherwise does look like the CPU is powering on and functioning. And hopefully in the future, TMG can add some sort of uh, notification to let you know that your system is down or that one of the heads have died. We see this with other systems and I'd love to see it uh, added here with the TMG. And so anyway, yeah, that's just a run through of uh, what we learned in testing here in the rain. We all got soaked. Uh, so a big shout out to everybody who drove in, who flew in and came out for this test uh, and tested all day long with us in the rain. And so not what we expected. We were hoping for drier weather. It's not what we got, but we still learned a ton regardless. And I thought it was pretty interesting. And so I just kind of wanted to package everything up and share it with you guys share what we found. So for full discussion, again, I'll have a link in the uh, video description to the forum to where we're all discussing this. Um, and yeah, that's it for now. So cool. Uh, if you'd like recommendations for uh, what I consider to be the best laser jammers at different price points, different features, and for different people, I'll have a link for that down in the video description as well. And so whew, with that said, 
that's it for now. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're all doing great, and I'll see you in the next video.